Welcome to the Community Church of Chapel Hill Unitarian Universalist. My name is George Thompson, and I'm a member of the Worship Associates Ministry here at the church. Whoever you are, whomever you love, however you arrived at this beloved place, you are welcome here. I especially want to welcome any visitors and newcomers to our church and call attention to the special note for you, welcome guests and newcomers on the back of your order of service. We are also pleased to welcome those of you who are joining us this morning virtually. Our minister is Reverend Tom Belote. Today, the Community Church Choir and Chamber Orchestra will present Haydn's Music for Anxious Times. Here are a few things to keep in mind. We are masking inside on Sunday mornings. After the service, we invite you to go in two different areas if you would like. The courtyard out there is a mask optional space for fellowship and where coffee and tea will be available. The area behind the building over there is a space where masking is mandatory. Since we are having two services, there will be no online small group social today. The small group social will return next week at the usual time. And finally, if you have not already done so, now would be a good time to turn off any cell phones or noisemakers so our service uh, can be a worshipful experience. For the call to worship this morning, please open your books to, page, to reading number 441 in the gray hymnal. I'll read the standard print and ask you to read the italicized print. The reading is called To Worship. To worship is to stand in awe under a heaven of stars before a flower, a leaf in sunlight, or a grain of sand. To worship is to be silent, receptive, before a tree astir with the wind or the passing shadow of a cloud. To worship is to work with dedication and with skill it is to pause from work and listen to a strain of music. To worship is to sing with the singing beauty of the earth. It is to listen through a storm to the still, small voice within. Worship is a loneliness seeking communion. It is a thirsty land crying out for rain. Worship is a kindred fire within our hearts. It moves through deeds of kindness and through acts of love. Worship is the mystery within us reaching out to the mystery beyond. It is an inarticulate silence yearning to speak. It is a window of the moment open to the sky of the eternal. Chalice Lighting for Music Sunday by Marnie Singer. The chalice is the container, the space where the musicians and the listeners gather. The oil is the fuel, the hours of practice and the life experiences of everyone in the room. The wick is the instruments and vocal cords through which the music flows. And the flame, the flame is the music which is created as if by magic. When the instruments are lifted, the breath is inhaled and the downbeat is knotted. May this flame ignite the music within us all.
while the choir while the choir is assembling, I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about the math. This piece of music we're going to play, we just started to play for you. First of all, some of you may wonder why a Unitarian Universalist Church uh, is doing a Catholic Mass and uh, saying words when translated, like, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ who was crucified, died and was buried and rose on the third day. I'll tell you, first of all, our fifth principle states that we draw from Jewish and Christian tr traditions which call us to respond to God's love by loving our neighbors as ourselves. Also, because this music, whatever the inspiration, is inspiring, spiritual, heartfelt, and profound. And there is a universality to it, to these settings that transcend ideology or creed. A little bit about the history of the Mass. At the time of the writing, Haydn was in his own state of anxiety, which has many parallels to our own time. Uh, Napoleon was uh, taking over Europe, and was uh, headed to Austria, and uh, which is where he was living. And he also had supply chain and inflation problems because uh, his patron, the Prince Esterhazy, had just cut off, had fired all of his woodwind and brass players, which is why you only see strings and a couple trumpet players today that Haydn was able to round up from the community. And he was also in a sort of a quarantine because he had just um, been confined to his room by his um, doctor after uh, exhausting himself writing the creation, an oratorio that was just before this. Also, he was 66 years old uh, when he wrote this, which is great news for old people like me. <laughs> and you can hear all of that in the music. There's a constant battle between foreboding, like in the first piece, and triumph, between resignation and persistence. Even the final Dona Nobis, which is normally done as, as a serene, you know, grant us peace. In this version, you'll see it has a demanding quality and a fiery, defiant spirit. Finally, I chose this piece at the beginning of the year, frankly, because I thought the title Music uh, Mass in a Time of Anxiety would fitting for these days we're living in. Little did I know how anxious these last few weeks would be. We had a couple of COVID scares in the choir. We had um, uh, one of the soloists had a bike accident a couple of weeks ago and, and a concussion and wasn't able, to, had to, wasn't able to join us. Just this morning we had, uh, like I should tell you, Eileen Reagan is listed as a soloist, but she um, came down with a throat ailment this morning and Amy Schaub Maddox is going to be taking her um, place. She wanted to let you know that she also tested for COVID and she's negative, she just has a plain old sore throat. And also Kitty Stahlberg, who I forgot to mention at the first service, is actually responsible for most of these musicians being here. Kitty Stahlberg, um, a, a violist who is part of the church and who's um, usually plays with us today, is, uh, was in Greensboro or Winston-Salem last night seeing Paul McCartney. So uh, that's why, <laughs> and she was up very late with that. So she gets a pass. <laughs> so um, anyway, that's what I want to let you know. So please enjoy the... Um, worshipful experience of the Mass.
is for Interfaith Council for Social Services. In 1963, a group of seven local women united their volunteer efforts to address inequities in Chapel Hill and Carborough. Our church was a founding member of Interfaith Council for Social Services, IFC, which almost six decades later continues its journey toward economic justice. IFC provides many critical services, emergency financial assistance and case management, oh, food and hygiene items at the community market, hot meals daily at the community kitchen, and advocacy. But today's main focus is on IFC's role in addressing homelessness. I'm sharing the following information on behalf of Rick Szymanski, who can't be here today, but he's our liaison to IFC. Homelessness has many causes. As you might expect, a homeless person's first priority is finding a safe place to sleep, a car, a tent, or a deserted cabin in the woods. The first priority of staff is helping the homeless person find safe shelter and then permanent housing as soon as possible. What you might not know is that dental issues are often their worst problem. Homeless people have to deal with painful teeth due to poor diet and lack of dental hygiene products and care. Here in Orange County, the Orange County Partnership to End Homelessness, formed in 2008, is a coalition of service providers, local governments, and community members working together and providing services with the goal of ending homelessness in our county. I learned that they operate a housing hotline and have a team to deal with street outreach and harm reduction, and another team to help focus folks locate shelter or stabilize a current housing situation. IFC has played an essential role in this partnership as the only organization that offers shelter for people experiencing homelessness. The Community House for Men and Home Start for Women and Families provide about 30,000 nights of shelter per year. IFC not only provides assistance to residents in finding housing, it helps them obtain dental and health care and other needed services. So, as we've seen, IFC plays an important leadership role in assisting people who are experiencing homelessness. Your generosity today in helping to fund all of their services will be greatly appreciated. If you are writing a check, please make it out to the Community Church of Chapel Hill with STP IFC in the memo line. Or if you are donating online, you can scroll down and do that. Any amount is welcome. If you're interested in joining other church members in volunteering, there are some IFC um, newsletters on a table in the Commons. Thank you.
Each week we hold in our service a time for sharing the joys and the sorrows of our community. As you can see this morning, uh, the front of the sanctuary looks a bit different, and so we'll be both entering and exiting from this side. Uh, the way this works, if you have a joy or a sorrow, you're invited to come forward, say your name, and briefly, in a sentence no more than two, say your joy or your sorrow. And um, I'm going to place the first few, and I'm going to place the stones this morning because it's a little, uh, uh, a little busy up here. Um, First stone in place was shared at the first service. Uh, it's a stone of joy for John Listina and Jenny Deloach, who were married uh, last Sunday um, afternoon at Memorial Rock. So congratulations to John and to Jenny. The second stone is a stone of both joy and sorrow. The joy is a joy that's shared by all of us, um, which is, and the, the person who asked me to place it is uh, uh, Mary Beth Powell and Bill Rote. Uh, the joy is a joy shared by our entire congregation, which is that Sarah Gush Tolfrey will be ordained by this congregation this afternoon at four o'clock. Uh, Bill and Mary Beth's sorrow, however, is that uh, they're going to be able to only to watch uh, from online since they're both uh, in quarantine due to COVID. Good morning. My name is Joelle Bourjali, and I have a, a sorrow that's not exactly turning into a joy, but um, I mentioned before my mom has Alzheimer's and she's living in a care home. Uh, she had a fall over the weekend and uh, she fractured a, a small part in her L1. Um, but the care at Duke was so thorough that it uh, revealed an incidental finding in her heart. So now that the, her doctors are aware of that, they can take care of that. So please hold her in your hearts. Hope she gets better soon. Thanks. Hi, I'm Leanne King. Um, I have a wonderful joy to share that um, after a pretty rough year, um, I've been visited by my mother, Carol McDonald, from Knoxville, Tennessee, and my aunt, um, Jan MacArthur, from Missoula, Montana, and it's so good to be in person with them. Hi, my name is Julie Pendleton. I didn't do this the first service, but today is the 20th anniversary of a car wreck where I by all rights would have been dead. And I learned to walk again, and I'm still here. So very quickly, a little birdie told me that before the service that today, speaking of uh, getting married, is the 51st anniversary of Scott and Jane Proven. So good. happy anniversary, Scott and Jane. With thanks for all the little birdies who bring messages of love. Um, a final stone is also placed for all of the joys and the sorrows that we hold in our hearts this morning. Amen.
freely have we received of gifts that minister to our needs of body and spirit. Gladly we bring to our church and its wide concerns a portion of that bounty. Please note that you can go to the website to donate online. At the top of the page, click under more at the right for the donation link. We will now receive the morning offering, which goes to the Interfaith Council.
little prayer. Let ruin end here. Let him find honey where there was once a slaughter. Let him enter the lion's cage and find a field of lilacs. Let this be the healing. And if not, let it be. To not sit down. We're going we're to remain standing for the close of our service. Um, won't you please join in saying the words by which we extinguish the chalice, we extinguish this flame, but not the, the truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again 
And now I invite you either to hold hands with the person next to you, or if you're not a hand holder, to put your hand over your heart as we sing together our closing song, Shalom. Maestro. Shalom.